Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this interview with Kriti, who has studied physics at Oxford University. Uh, in this video, you'll learn a bit about what it's like to study at Oxford, what a typical day in the life of a student is, what her application process was like, and so much more. You might recognize her from some of the YouTube web classes that we've done, um, so if you do, that's good to have a background already. A bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the SnapRevise YouTube channel and that you've rung the bell so that you get uh, all the notifications you need for whenever we release a new video. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy this video. It's got some great insights there into what it takes to get into a top university and then what it's like when you get there. So without any further ado, here is the interview with Kriti. Hi Kriti, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Let's just start with a bit of an intro to you. If you could tell me what you studied at A-level, then where and what you studied at university, and then what you're going on to do now. Sure, so at school I studied um, physics, maths, father maths, and art at A-level. Um, I really wanted kind of that balance of creativity and just science and maths. Um, at university, I studied physics at Oxford. Um, did like the four-year master's course and now I'm about to start um, a job in consulting so that starts soon and yeah that's me currently. Amazing that sounds exciting congratulations on that. Um, what was it about physics specifically that, that drew you to study at university? Yeah sure so I mean back when I was in school I thought that physics was sort of asking the biggest questions, you know, like how the universe formed, why it formed this way. Um, and that kind of curiosity really drove me to pursue studying it at a higher level. I just, I wanted to know the, you know, the galaxies and everything like that. But then when I graduated, I realized that actually studying a subject at university isn't really so much about the material that you actually learn, but more how you kind of learn how to think. Uh, I mean, if you find the material interesting, then that's great because you're going to enjoy your time there. But now I've graduated, I've realized that actually the lasting thing has been just the way that I go about thinking about things now. And so with physics, that's quite like the problem solving approach, kind of testing assumptions that you hold and this kind of thing. So I guess when choosing what you want to study, the biggest thing is just trying to figure out how you like to think about things um, would be sort of my biggest conclusion. And uh, how did you go about deciding where to study? Did you go to a lot of open days or was Oxford sort of marked out like just as a place you really wanted to go to? Yeah, so I um, knew that I wanted to go to Oxford um, or, you know, this for all my other university choices as well. Um, let's say Oxford over Cambridge um, because I wanted to study physics in an isolated context, I think because I didn't do chemistry at A-level, the natural sciences courses that are available at some of the universities um, wouldn't have allowed me to have that much flexibility with the modules that I chose. Um, but then with Oxford specifically, uh, I went to an Oxford open day and I was just wandering around, kind of popping my head in here and there. And I came across a, like a physics open day discussion. Um, and it was really conversational, very relaxed. Um, but then it, right at the beginning, the professor was like, okay, let's forget all of this admin stuff. Um, you can find that on the internet. Let's just talk about physics. And all of us were initially like, oh no, <laughs> like really frightened. But then it became relaxed really quickly. And then I realized that this, this is what like the tutorial system would be like. And that's what the professor said. And I really enjoyed that kind of discussion. Um, it was actually much less intimidating than I thought. Um, and that was when I sort of became really attached to kind of coming to Oxford. Um, and just in general, I like the feel of the place. It's really big. It's got lots of different characters to it. I mean, there's the central part and there's also the outer areas that all have different kind of personalities. And, and um, yeah, it's, it feels like a proper town, but it's also, it's quite intimate because of the colleges. So I think all of these things, I just kind of fell in love with Oxford when I went and saw it. And what was the application process like? Was it really complicated? Did they put you through some difficult interviews? Run me through what that was like from sort of start to finish. Sure. So obviously you have to write um, a personal statement just um, as for anywhere else. 
but I think with Oxford they don't really put too much emphasis on the personal statement. Um, most of the efforts uh, went towards the admissions test that happened first, um, which is called yeah the physics admissions test, and it's not um, it's not really that similar to A level. I think the kind of questions that they ask you are much more conceptual understanding um, presenting you with kind of weird situations where you have to rather than think to what physics you understand and know from your syllabus fall back on more fundamental principles and that kind of thing um, and once you get through that then you get invited to interviews you stay in oxford for three days uh, which is really nice, actually. I think it helps you get into the sort of mentality of like being prepared for interviews. And so I had three um, and very similar kind of questions to the admissions test, very conceptual. They sort of just, you know, immediately there's no kind of small talk. At least I didn't have any. It was just, here's a problem, solve it. And then, yeah, if, if that's successful, then you find out in January. Okay. And just going back to physics itself, what was it like studying it at university compared to A-level? Was there a, a massive step up in sort of the content and the, and the, I guess, the complexity of what you studied? Yeah, so I think anytime you're moving um, forward in sort of the academic route, so like even between GCSEs and A-levels, there's going to be a step up, I think, that's consistent. And there definitely was a step up between school and, and university. But I think more notably, um, it was actually m much more sort of first principles based. It was a lot more sort of thinking, not just, you know, what did I learn in the syllabus? Like, what am I supposed to know for the four mark and six mark questions of, you know, physics exams? It's, it's, you know, why is this a law? Why does it work in the real world? How did, you know, like logically that make sense to the people who sort of discovered it? And I think that sort of thinking uh, sort of preps you better for understanding more and more conceptually difficult things. I think um, that's the sort of trying to get you to tone back all of the actual physics that you know and, and just start with maths, first principles, and then start building on physics on top of it. And so I actually found that my maths and further maths A-levels prepared me way better for um, studying physics at university than physics actually did, uh, which was interesting. I, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. And then um, what was the sort of typical day in the life of a student there? Were there a lot of classes in each day? And then so how did you spend your free time outside of that? Sure. So uh, there weren't a lot of classes each day. I mean, we'd start the day quite early with lectures. I think scientists have the morning slot um, for lectures. So that would be how the morning begins. I think the later you are, like, you know, if you're a fourth year, your lectures are later. If you're a first year, it's 8 a.m. <laughs> or actually, yeah, maybe 9 a.m. or something. And then you'd have maybe one tutorial a week or maybe one every two weeks and you'd sort of spend the rest of your time sort of doing problem sheets during the day and then in the evening there's so much to do there's you know obviously like lots of pubs bars clubs but also like i think extracurricular activities for anyone there's like a huge range of stuff to do so there's a lot to be busy with and yeah there's just yeah quite a lot going on and what sort of extracurricular activities did you get involved in yourself so I was um, actually a member of the Oxford Union for a bit. It's this debating society that also sort of invites um, quite like high profile speakers to come speak. And yeah, that, that took up a lot of my time in my earlier years uh, because there was a lot of sort of obviously like inviting the guests and um, when they did agree to come, like managing their transport, their experience like at the union, thinking about which guests, uh, which guests would best match which students. So we had um, George Foreman come in at one point. So I think we like extended invitations to the Boxing Society, that kind of thing. So yeah, that, that was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed that. I, I really like public speaking and, and that kind of thing and debating. So that was a really good match for me. But loads of sports teams, especially, you know, university sports, quite a high level. Um, for yeah for athletic people and things like that and then in terms of assessment how are you sort of marked and graded in your sort of course that you did sure so uh i think throughout the year you know there's no 
um, contribution to like your your final marks that year. Like throughout the year, you, doesn't it doesn't matter what you get. You just should try and do your best. I think for my first year, I didn't even get told what percentages I was getting in problem sheets. It it, it was literally just um, okay, you got this right, you got this wrong, and the reason for that. Um, Although I do, I will say that I think this varies from different colleges. I think that's just the way that my college tried to do it. Um, because in our tutorials, we wouldn't really talk about, you know, what was the answer? Did you get it? Yes or no? It was more like a general discussion around the topics. Like, do you fundamentally understand what this problem sheet was trying to get you to think about? Um, so I think marking it in terms of like, okay, you got 87% and then someone else got, you know, 64, like it doesn't really it doesn't really make sense in the basis of the discussion, but I think that's very much a college specific thing. And I, yeah, I would look into sort of speaking to people who go to different colleges to see what they do. That actually might be something that's worth explaining to people. What, how does the college system work at Oxford? Do you pick a college that you go to before? How did you choose which one to go to? Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, I should have mentioned this in the whole application process, but you do select a college to apply to. Um, I think it's initially when you're looking around Oxford, it can seem that like all of the colleges are the same. And I think initially they tell you that it doesn't really matter which college you go to. But I think firstly that this is a very subject specific thing. I think for someone who's studying humanities, it would matter to see which professors are at your college because you could see, you know, what they specialize in, if that's something that's interesting to you. But for science, I'd say, you know, it's it's a bit more generalized across the colleges, so it, it matters less. Um, so you'd pick the one that you like. I literally just picked the first one that I walked into. It was the one where there was this physics open day happening because I, I liked the feel of the place. Um, so factors when deciding that would be maybe how big it is, um, you know, is it, like where is it located? Is that important to you? The professors who are there also quite important. Um, so I think the best way to figure that out is to try and, if you can, like reach out to someone who's maybe already there. But also there's plenty of um, information on, on the specific college websites, not just the, the university website. Um, so yeah, I would I would really look into that before you start because I think um, yeah, college choice does actually end up impacting. Um, I think at least your initial years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And just just one last thing, just to finish off, if you could give a piece of advice to our A level or GCSE students that you found useful and when you were studying at that time as well. Sure. So I think um, general advice for revising and kind of throughout the year learning is to not spend too much time on notes. I am a huge culprit of this. I spend ages making, you know, all my highlighters lined up and everything. Um, I think maybe for like more essay subjects, that's a really good tactic because then you can organize your notes and stuff. But for, for physics, for maths, it's all about practice. You just need to do questions, answer problems. Um, one of my physics tutors actually gave me this analogy that's like, you wouldn't read a whole theory book on knowing how to drive a car and then be able to get in the car and like drive it perfectly you have to actually drive the car um before you know how to do it confidently and i think the same thing really does apply with physics um it's important to practice but then i think more generally just while learning always question why something is the case you know why why is this the law like why does this make sense and i think training your brain to think like that rather than sort of memorizing what's written is just a more enjoyable way of engaging with the material. And it's more likely that things later will come more naturally to you because you've spent time to understand like the fundamental principles of what's going on. Awesome, that's amazing. Um, well, I found that really interesting. I'm sure all of our viewers will as well. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kriti. I thought there were lots of really great insights in that video there. Uh, remember, you can find a lot more from us on our website at www.snaprevise.co.uk. There you'll find revision guides, teaching videos, and so much more. Uh, you can click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click here to see the rest of our videos there. We're doing currently Sunday sessions on Sundays at 6 p.m. where there'll be a teaching class with one of our tutors. So if you're interested in those, make sure to go check those out and set a reminder on each video so that you'll be alerted when they go live.